Edgeworth is now talking to Detective Bad, who, believe it or not, is actually supposed to be one of the good guys in this game. I mean, I always thought he was going to be a bad guy because his name is Detective Bad. But no, he's one of the good guys, and now he's going to tell us about what happened at the time of the murder. Alright, testimony from Detective Bad. Mm-hmm. The way to get through this testimony is by pressing the third statement. This statement right over here about the gunshot. Are you sure, Detective Bad? Because there is something else which created a large sound during the time that is in question. Namely, the balloon, which popped. That made a large gunshot-like sound, right? Why didn't Detective Bad mention this? Yes, he was playing with balloons and eating lollipops with little Kay Faraday. Alrighty, so explain that, Detective Bad. Why didn't you hear the balloon pop? Uh-oh. Seems like he's going to shoot down Edgeworth with a lollipop power. Yeah, I have no idea what you're talking about, Detective Bad. No, wait. He seems to be saying that the room is soundproof. Alrighty, so that's why he didn't hear the balloon pop. He was inside a soundproof room. But if that's the case, then how did he hear the gunshot?
the other way around? What if we looked at this situation from the opposite direction? Just like Phoenix Wright always does when he's in a tough situation in court. Alright, so Edgeworth performs the necessary turnabout to figure out the problem with this situation. Alright, we have a lot of information which is being added to logic. So, now that we have a lot of logic, I believe that it's logic time! Oh boy, let's see what sorts of logical connections we can make. Let me see, we have the window and the smell. That looks like a logical connection. Because, as you can see, the piece of logic about the window mentions a smell, the scent of flowers. So, let's make this connection. Alrighty, alrighty, alrighty. So the windows were open at the time. Alright, that seems to make sense. Now let's connect the open windows to the fact that the television was extremely loud. Alrighty, so you can hear things through an open window. That's kind of obvious, but this is added to logic anyway. And we have one last logical deduction to make. The connection between the missing evidence and the gunshot. Alrighty, so it looks like Edgeworth has figured everything out. Alrighty, so let's examine that television. First, I'm going to take a look at the videotape player.
Alrighty, so this is the missing surveillance tape. Yes, maybe the gunshot he heard was the gunshot on this tape, and not the gunshot at the time of the murder. Alrighty, so Edgeworth has just told us what to do. Show what the gunshot is, and how they heard it. Clearly, they heard it through the window, so deduce at the window. Present the videotape that we just found. Alright, so maybe the killer was trying to create some sort of alibi. I don't know! Figure it out yourself, Franziska! So let me see. He set the tape to play the gunshot at a specific time. So this must be when the crime took place. Yeah, that's it! The killer wanted us to think that the murder took place at a certain time, so the killer could create an alibi for him or herself. Alrighty. Looks like we finally figured everything out. Okay, so the murder took place before Detective Gumshoe was put on guard duty. I wonder who doesn't have an alibi for that time period. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know, I can't think of anybody who doesn't have an alibi at that time. But that's okay, I don't need to think of somebody who doesn't have an alibi. Because Callisto Yu has solved the mystery for us. Yes, that's right. She's identified the murderer, and she wants to clarify something with Edgeworth. So Edgeworth, Franziska, and Detective Bad all head over to the courtroom, where they finally, finally, finally learn who the real murderer is.